Hello everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, I'm Tessera's Evology Help. In today's video, I'm going to be solving the Chemistry Paper 6. This is the May-June 2023 Paper 6 Variant 1. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and like my videos to receive more videos like this one. Let's get started. Number 1. Ethanol can be made by fermentation of sugars found in the plants. A byproduct of fermentation is carbon dioxide gas. A student made some ethanol using the following method. Step 1 is to cut up some sugar and crush it. Step 2 is adding hot water to the sugar cane and stir to dissolve the sugar in the sugar cane. So simply this experiment is about uh, do, producing ethanol which is alcohol by fermentation of sugars which is adding sugar and yeast to produce ethanol and some carbon dioxide gas. The carbon dioxide gas is produced because this is an anaerobic respiration process. So step 1 and 2 are for extracting the sugar from the sugar cane. Step 3 is remove the solids from the mixture to obtain sugar solution. Step 4 is let the sugar solution cool and add the yeast. Place the mixture in the apparatus shown in figure 1.1. This is figure 1.1. Step 6 leave the apparatus until fermentation is complete. So A is asking for the name of the apparatus labeled A in figure 1.1. This is the conical flask. This is the conical flask we are talking about. B is explain why hot water rather than cold water is used in step 2 so that the sugar dissolves faster. Let me explain this question. As we all know that if you have for example cold and hot water, if you add sugar in both of these cups then we will see that the sugar will dissolve faster in the hot water. You can try it out for yourself and also the hot water contains a higher kinetic energy than the cold water so it will dissolve faster of course. C. Name the methods used to remove the solids from the mixture in step 3 and draw a diagram to show how this is done. So we all know that if we want to uh, filter out solids from a mixture of for example water or a liquid then we have to use a filtration filtration funnel as I just uh, drawed like uh, over here you can use this filter funnel you can draw for example a test tube under it or you can just draw a filter funnel alone with the filter paper surrounding it and you will get the full mark so this is question C D says state why the sugar solution is allowed to cool before the yeast is added in step 4 so of course if you um, add the yeast in a hot solution of water then the enzymes will denature and when the enzymes denature then the yeast will not work properly so then you're, you will not produce ethanol. E says describe how the appearance of lime water changes as fermentation takes place. We all know that the fermentation there is a carbon dioxide gas produced and we all know that when there is carbon dioxide gas the lime water turns milky so we will say from colorless to milky. F is describe how the students can tell that the fermentation is complete. There are no more bubbles produced and this indicates that the carbon dioxide gas, it is no longer produced so then the reaction is complete. G, name the process used to separate ethanol from a mixture obtained by fermentation. This is fractional distillation. Question number two, a student investigates the reaction between aqueous ammonia and two different aqueous solutions of copper 2 sulfate labeled A and B. Solutions A and B have different concentrations. The student does two experiments. Experiment one is fill a burette with solution A, run some of the solution A out of the burette so that the level of solution A is on the burette scale and record the initial burette, uh, burette reading. Use a measuring cylinder to pour out 25 centimeter cubed of aqueous ammonia into the conical flask. Stand the, stand the conical flask on a white uh, tile. Slowly add solution A from the burette to the conical flask while swirling the flask until the mixture in the conical flask just becomes, just starts to become cloudy. So you're going to add, this is a titration process, and you're going to add um, drops of the solution A until the solution uh, becomes cloudy. This indicates that there is a color change. Record the final burette reading. Experiment 2. Empty the conical flask and rinse it with distilled water. Empty the burette and rinse it with distilled water. Rinse the burette with solution B. Repeat experiment 1 using solution B instead of solution A. Use the burette diagrams in figure 2.1 and figure 2.2 to complete 
to complete table 2.1. So this is experiment 1 and experiment 2. So right here we can see that the initial reading, it is actually over here 0 0.6. We have to read from this side. You don't read like this. So it is 0 0.6, the initial and the final is actually 18.3 and over here the initial reading is actually 9.2 centimeter cubed and the final reading is actually 21.0 centimeter cubed and i have written down the information in this table and to calculate the volume of the aqueous uh, copper 2 sulfate added then you have to um, subtract the numbers from each other so you subtract for example 18.3 minus 0 0.6 and you will get 17.7 .7 on your calculator you can calculate them and this is how you get the volume that is added b says explain why a white tile is used during the titration as we all know that the use of a white tile is to see color change clearly or you can also see if there is a new um, for example precipitate that is formed or a solid so uh, this is question B. Question C. In experiment two, the burette and the conical flask are both rinsed with water. The burette is then rinsed with solution B. I state why both the burette and conical flask are rinsed with water. This is to remove so, uh, solid A. And double I says explain why the burette is then rinsed with solution B. This is to remove the water. Triple I describe how the result of experiment 2 would be different if the conical flask is rinsed with aqueous ammonia after rinsing with water. Explain your answer. So if you rinse with aqueous ammonia, then you will have more volume of the ammonia inside of your uh, conical flask. So that means that more, more solution B is needed as there is increased volume of aqueous ammonia in the flask. So if you have, for example, there will be more than 25 centimeter cubed of the aqueous ammonia inside your conical flask. So you would need more, uh, more of the solution B so that you can balance out what you have just added in the conical flask. Question DI, deduce which solution of copper 2 sulfate A or B is more concentrated? Explain your answer. Of course, it is going to be solution B as there is smaller volume needed. Solution B only needed 11.8 of the uh, copper 2 sulfate and uh, solution A needed 17.7. So this indicates that the solution B is more concentrated because you need less of the indicator to, um, to show a color change. If it's more dilute, then there will be more amount of indicator needed to just show a color change because there is less uh, concentration. Deduce how many times more concentrated the solution of copper 2 sulfate is than the other solution of copper 2 sulfate. So um, to calculate how many times more concentrated, you're going to be dividing the 17.7. You're going to divide it over 11.8. This is going to give you 1.5. So you're going to write that down. E. Describe how the reliability of the results obtained can be checked. This is by repeating the experiment and comparing the results. Deduce the volume of solution A required when experiment 1 is carried out with a 10 cm cubed of aqueous ammonia. So they actually use 25 cm cubed, not 10. So to calculate, first of all, you're going to be dividing over here, they use 25 cm cubed. So we're going to be dividing 25 over 10. This is going to give us 2.5. So you're going to calculate the, you're going to actually divide the 17.7 divided by 2.5 and it's going to give you the answer of 7.1 centimeter cubed. In experiments 1 and 2, the volume of aqueous ammonia is measured using a measuring cylinder. Given advantage and a disadvantage of using the volumetric pipette instead of a measuring cylinder to measure the volume of the aqueous ammonia. First of all, the advantage is it is more accurate and the disadvantage it is slower than the uh, measuring cylinder three a student tests two solids solid e and solid f tests on solid e taper 3.3.1 uh, shows the test and the student's observations tests um, the test one it says um, they gently heated half of solid a in a boiling tube 
a solution forms and a steam is given off and condensation this indicates that there is water in the solution or it is hydrated so it is actually a question over here question one is um, I mean a state what conclusion can be made about solid a from the observations it contains water when there is steam when there is steam or condensation then there there is water in the solution Test 2. Dissolve the remaining of solid E in water to form solution E. Divide solution E into three portions. To the first portion of solution E, add aqueous sodium hydroxide dropwise and then in excess. And the observations is a brown precipitate forms which remains when excess is added. So we're going to go to the end of the exam. You're going to be provided with this um, notes. And over here, they said that they added sodium hydroxide, uh, first dropwise, and then an excess, and then it turned into brown precipitate. And when it remained in excess, it means that it is insoluble in excess. And all of these observations match the iron 3 over here. So, first, uh, so this indicates that we have iron 3 in our solution. So we're going to write down three, uh, iron 3 over here. And then test 3 says that the product was warmed of test 2 and the test, uh, they tested for any gas produced. This produced um, a gas that turns uh, lead lithium paper blue. This is actually ammonia, as we all know. And again, in the back of the exam, you have tests for the gases and turns damp, le uh, damp lithium paper blue. This is actually the ammonia. So you can always check the notes. They will always be included in the future exams uh, in, after 2023. Okay, so test four says to the second portion of solution E, add one centimeter depth of uh, dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous sodium, uh, aqueous silver nitrate. There is no change. So this indicates that there is no... Um, any one of the following chloride bromide or iodide so if there's no change that means there is no chloride bromide or iodide in that solution okay so the last test which is test 5 to the third uh, portion of solution e add one centimeter depth of dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous barium nitrate this is different from the other one and this time there is a white precipitate this indicates that we will go to the back of the page this indicates that there is barium nitrate that indicates that there's sulfate in our solution and this formed a white precipitate so so far we have the last thing it is sulfate so so far we have um water we have iron three we have sulfate so this is our solution over here b uh, question b says identify the gas produced in test three this is ammonia c says uh, state what conclusion can be made about so solid e from observations in test four as i said in test four um, when they added uh, the dilute nitric acid and silver nitrate and there was no change that may that means there is no chloride bromide or iodide last question is identify the three ions in solid e this is ammonium because there was ammonia produced and iron three and sulfate tests on solid f solid f is zinc sulfide complete the expected observations e to the first portion of solution f the student adds aqueous ammonia dropwise until it is, it is in excess so we're going to check right now what happens if we add aqueous ammonia on zinc over here this is here white precipitate soluble in excess we're giving a color solution so we're going to write that observation down in that question um, up here and then f says to the second portion of solution f the students add uh, the student adds a few drops of acidified aqueous potassium manganate this should, uh, this should turn from purple to colorless so how do we know again you're going to go here and um, we have sulfite in our solution because it was zinc sulfite so when you add a small volume of acidified um, aqueous potassium manganate you're going to change color from um, purple to colorless so we're going to write that down 
again. Uh, the student adds one centimeter depth of that dilute nitric acid followed by a, a few drops of aqueous barium nitrate. So this test is actually for sulfate, not for sulfite. This is sulfite, not sulfate. So this is a confusing part, but there will be no observation because there is no sulfate in our solution over here. Number four, the last question, solid cobalt 2 oxide is a base which is insoluble in water. It reacts very slowly with cold dilute sulfuric acid to form a solution of cobalt 2 sulfate. Describe how to make pure dry crystals of hydrated cobalt 2 sulfate. You are provided with cobalt 2 sul oxide, dilute sulfuric acid, and common laboratory apparatus. So this question is about the crystallization process that we all know. So first of all, you're going to put in a beaker or any um, like container you're going to add in it uh, ex you're going to add excess coupled to oxide and dilute sulfuric acid and you should stir it you get a mark for writing that and heating the mixture until the reaction is over and then you're going to use a filter um, funnel to filter the excess coupled to oxide then you're going to heat the solution and leave it to evaporate the the solution that um, you filtered out the excess coupled to oxide from and uh, lastly you're going to filter the crystals wash and dry using two filter paper and you have to memorize uh, the crystallization process it comes very frequently in paper six as well as all the other papers so this was it Thank you all for watching and make sure to subscribe and like so you can receive more content like this and good luck with your exams.